since 2002, clinical psychologist Philip McGrath, better known as Dr. Phil, has hosted his own show. In this time, he has interviewed numerous disturbed individuals. So, from the teen who molested his own sister, to the 15 year old who murdered his own mother, join us. In March 2016, 12 year old Aneska was interviewed on the show. According to her parents, she frequently attacks her siblings and once even choked her sister. Meanwhile, when she was six, she killed the pet hamster with a flashlight, whilst at seven, she crushed a bunch of baby birds. In explaining her actions, Aneska blamed inner voices. Are you sorry that your brothers and sisters are afraid of you? Yes. Do you wish they were not afraid of you? Yes. But yet you attack them? Yes. Do you wish you could stop yourself from attacking them? Yes. And why am I saying yes so much? You tell me. Because mm -hmm. you're asking me the yes questions? Your sister wrote a letter. She said the other day she got extremely mad at me talking about you and my brothers and started to hurt us. Aneska ended up hitting and scratching the babysitter. Five minutes later, me and my brothers were in my room and Aneska tries to come in and hurt us, but we were holding the door. My babysitter comes in and tells her to draw the picture that we've already seen of what she was feeling. So she draws a picture of me and my brothers in graves. She wants us dead. I'm afraid to sleep at night. Please, can you help? Do you want them dead? No. They're my siblings. Tell me what it's like when you hear voices. I don't hear them anymore. Did you ever really hear them or were they just kind of thoughts that crept into your mind? I don't know. Like sometimes I hear whispers and I can't make out what they're saying. Okay. So it's scary for me. Can I just ask, maybe, can you explain, remember that army voice? Can you talk a little bit about that and just explain the soldier? Like, did you see him or did you just hear him? I saw him and I heard him. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you saw and heard. His name was Mark and he died on the battlefield. What kind of battlefield? Was it like a really old time battlefield or a, a current battlefield? Current battlefield. Uh, like in an Afghanistan battlefield or that type of thing? Kind of like Iraq or something. Uh huh. And uh, what was he saying to you? He talked through things with me. Mm -hmm. What was the best advice he gave you? That part I really don't know. Well, he said... If my brothers were being loud and obnoxious, then I should go in my room and talk to him. Yeah. How did he feel about being dead? He didn't explain that part. He said it was painful though. He missed his family and he missed his home and he, he said he missed, missed being there. Yeah. And that he, he, he could, he wished he could be there with his family more often. Mm -hmm. Did he like talking to you? Yeah. He said I reminded me of his kids. Yeah. Why do you think he was talking to you instead of someone else? I don't know. I'm kind of like a unique person. I, I, you can't find much people like me. Yeah. Yeah. At only 12 years old, Colin molested his 11-year-old sister, Addison. Two years later, he repeated the offence. On both occasions, Addison told her parents, but was ignored. Fortunately, however, on the second time it happened, a hired counsellor called Child Protective Services, who were able to take Colin away. 
the first time she had fallen asleep on the couch and I had just gotten done watching pornography and I just remember going out there being like, oh, okay. And then I started touching her 20 minutes in. I tried to have sex with her, but it didn't work. I tried again, didn't work. So I just gave up and continued touching her. Maybe 30 minutes into it, something told me, hey, this isn't right. You shouldn't be doing this. This is your sister. It's like the other half of my brain just said, oh, who cares? I want what I want and I'm gonna get what I want. Second time, it was about the same thing and I had that uncontrollable desire for sex and I was willing to do anything or hurt anybody to get it and I didn't care. My sister was asleep on the couch so I went in there and I was feeling over her clothes and I took it one step further and reached my hand down her panties and then I proceeded to take her jeans off and her underwear. It feels like you're a totally different person, like you can't really stop what you're doing. Almost like you don't have control over yourself. And it's, it's really scary. You don't deny now molesting your sister on two occasions, correct? No, I do not. Tell me what goes through your mind when you touch your sister or you touch a child, what goes through your mind at that moment? Uh, I just wasn't really thinking about anything other than sets. I, I just wanted my needs met and I realized that it was wrong now, but at the time it didn't, it didn't really feel wrong. It felt right for me, but I realize now that that was messed up, what I did, and... Well, based on your recounting, we've put together a list of, of your sexual offenses. You touched a five-year-old girl when you were nine, mm -hmm. touched a six-year-old girl when you were 12, yeah. touched your sister when she was 11 and you were 13, touched your mother's breast several times when you were 13, uh, touched your sister when she was 13 and you were 14. How do you feel about what you've done to, to your sister? I feel terrible about it. I, I never planned on hurting my sister. I love my sister. I apologize. Like, the letter that I wrote you, maybe you didn't find it sincere, but I put a lot of time and effort into that. I probably spent about three days writing that and my dad says that it took me three days because I was lazy. No, it took me three days because I really wanted to pour my heart and emotion into it. I don't think that it was as sincere as you say it is because how can you look at a family member and just be okay with hurting them just to meet your own needs because you are that selfish? It was your selfishness that made you do all those things. On December 25th, 1996, six-year-old John Bernier Ramsey was found dead in the basement of her home. She'd been strangled. According to one theory, her nine-year-old brother, Burke, had accidentally killed her before the murder was covered up by their parents, Patsy and John. These suspicions were only strengthened by Burke's refusal to talk to the media. That was until his interview with Dr. Phil in September 2016. However, rather than affirm his innocence, some audience members were creeped out by Burke's constant smiling. The night that your sister JonBenet was killed, there were three people in that house that we know the identity of, and you're one of those three, you, your mother, and your father. But in the 20 years that have gone by, you're the one that has never spoken. You've never talked about this publicly, and you've decided to do so now. My question for you is why now, and why here? For a long time, the media basically made our lives crazy. It's hard to miss the cameras and news trucks in your front yard, and 
we'd go to the supermarket sometimes and there'd be a tabloid, you know, with my picture, Jean Monnet's picture, plastered on the front. They would follow us around. Seeing that as a little kid, it's just kind of a chaotic nightmare. So I was pretty skeptical of like any sort of media. Like it just made me a very private person. As to why I'm doing it now, it's the 20th anniversary and there's apparently still a lot of attention around it. Are you aware of these different theories that are out there? Theories that you killed your sister, theories that your mother killed John Bonet, and theories that an intruder killed John Bonet. Those seem to be the three camps that people talk about. Yeah, I mean, I've, I know that we were suspects. I didn't, I didn't know they were camps, I guess. And these are people that post online. Do you know the theories that they set forth in saying that your mom killed John Bonet? I don't know the details, but I know the ransom note, they think the handwriting match. Have you seen it? Have you read it? I don't think I've read the whole thing. I've definitely seen pictures of it, though. Did the handwriting look familiar to you at all? Had uh, you seen it ever before? No. I feel like the listen carefully is very distinct, and I've never really seen that. I don't know, I've never really looked at it closely because I'll see it and kind of get taken aback and it's not something I really want to look at like a lot you know right does that look like her handwriting <laughs> honestly looking at that she would always bug me about having good handwriting and she would like make me rewrite stuff to try to get me to have good handwriting and I think it's too sloppy <laughs> There still are people that believe that you killed your sister. What, what do you say about that? Look at the evidence, or the lack thereof. Part of their rationale, these people say, you are the only one that your parents would go to the lengths that they went to to cover up everything that happened. If they're talking about fabricating this ransom note. They're talking about if she was strangled, then causing the head injury. All of this cover-up was all done to protect you because they didn't want to lose two children. That's their theory. I, I don't know if to say that because I know that's not what happened. There's, there's been a few people that said that's not even physically possible for a nine-year-old to do that. Like, you won't find any evidence because that's not what happened. I know I didn't do it. Let's clear this up once and for all. Did you do anything to harm your sister, John Bonet? No. Did you murder your sister, John Bonet? No. On August 10th, 2012, paranoid schizophrenic, 15 year old Zachary Davis entered his mother, Melanie's bedroom, and brutally murdered her. A few hours later, Zachary was arrested, and in interrogation, he told police that the voice of his deceased father had demanded he do it. Did you kill your mother? M m yeah. You killed your mother? And why did you kill her? She uh, wasn't taking care of my family. Meaning you and your brother? Yeah. Is that who you mean? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When did you decide to kill your mother? I decided the day I did it. And the method you chose was what? Uh, beating her to death. And you, you beat her to death with what? Uh, sledgehammer. And where did you hit her? In the head. Uh -huh. Where was she when you did this? She was in her room. What was she doing? She was uh, asleep. You've got a sledgehammer in one hand, you've got your hand on the doorknob with the other, and you open that door, what's going through your head at that moment? I don't remember. My mind was pretty much blank. 
Why kill her that night? Why not kill her a week earlier or a week later? Something made that night the night. I had enough. You had enough? Why that day? I just uh, thought it was a good time. You remember opening the door, right? It wasn't locked? It wasn't. Did you stand there and look at her for a minute before you did it? Yeah. Did you say goodbye to her in your mind? No. And when you swung that hammer the first time, did you swing it hard? Yes. Did you swing from over your head? Mm-hmm. I mean, was this a big swing from over your head? Did she make a noise? I couldn't just hear the hammer hitting her head. And what did it sound like? There was this uh, wet thumping sound. <laughs> yeah. How long before you hit her the second time? Just a few seconds. Did you think she was already dead? Uh, she woke up and she started uh, seizing up. Did she look at you? I looked into her eyes, but uh, she didn't look at me.